So it's been a while since uh, Rocky and I have been together in the studio. And you, if you've seen me around town, you might see me uh, carrying this new 360 degree camera, which is actually six GoPros on a stick. A lot of people mistakenly assume it's a selfie stick. It's not a selfie stick at all. It lets me create video for the new Oculus Rift that's going to come out next year and all the others like uh, Samsung Gear VR and whatnot. And so I'm really hyper interested in new camera technology. And uh, it, it's fine that we're shooting with the uh, old style 1080p cameras like you're looking at me now on, but I'm really interested in this new space. And uh, we have some camera uh, announcements to make t this morning on our first show back in the studio. So let's get to it. I'm Orang Zeb Khan, uh, morning Robert, how are you? Good. I'm with Altia Systems, I'm the co-founder and CEO at the company. Been in the valley for quite a while, came back to school here and uh, have built a lot of computer systems and chips, built most of the computers that run the world's banks, at Tandem Computers, the non-stop wow. systems, and then a lot of chips that power disk drives. About 10 years back, got interested in video, we did the PlayStation 2 graphics chip and a chip for the GS Cube, which was used for movie making. Uh, for ultra high-end computer-generated animation. And uh, last few years, we've been interested in, in expanding the view. You know, if you think about it, cameras haven't changed a lot in about 140 years. You get kind of a 50 to 80 degree field of view. Our eyes take in a lot more. And so we said, you know, how can you give the natural human perspective to people yeah. no matter where they are? Right? So the, the reason I was interested in meeting you um, is, it, one, I'm using this right. new, new contraption. <laughs> which is uh, really interesting. I, I had the only one at Coachella, the big music festival. Yeah, that's very cool. The problem is that this is actually six high resolution GoPros in a ball and it lets you see 360 degrees. Right. Now, the world is starting to change because YouTube just a few weeks ago turned on the capability to display this kind of camera. That's right. And Facebook announced it, uh, that uh, uh, this kind of capability is coming. Okay. Now, Facebook inve invested in Oculus Rift, right. which is this uh, new virtual reality headset, and there's a bunch of virtual reality headsets coming, but that has me keyed yeah. in on this <laughs> camera technology. Now, until I got this thing, I didn't realize how uh, early we are uh, in terms of stitching software. I have a thousand dollar piece of software that goes with this camera to stitch the six GoPros together. Yeah. And it's really a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and I can tell you what your lap yep. is where we're going with this. You're putting a camera with three separate sensors in it, three separate lenses. Yep and you're making a beautiful image out of it. Thank you, that's it. You know, and so think about it, there are three miniaturized video cameras, like, you know, that's the GoPro is a physical device, they're tiny in here, and then behind that is a chip. And in that chip, we now have about 30 patents worth of technology, and as you said, actually stitching is pretty hard, especially really close, because of parallax. Because you have a parallax issue. Exactly. I, people don't realize, so when I'm filming with this and I get close, right. all of a sudden you're ghosted. Or, yeah, exactly. Or there's a scene, or some artifact is on the screen. That's and it, exactly. It makes this, this, the video not look good, right? Exactly right, and the other thing is, you know, when you put them at a sharp angle, then if you render them, it doesn't look natural. So, so what we do is ultra high speed real time computation to bring in those video streams and on the fly, process them, and then figure out a cylindrical surface to paint them on so that when it comes out, and it's a really simple plug and play USB camera, it's meant to be tiny. Yeah. Take it with you wherever you go, plug it into your PC or Mac, and now you've got panoramic 4K video. So the world's out there with HD now, and we're kind of taking it one step further, putting out 3840 pixels by 1080 pixels. So the resolution, the quality, and the fact that it's a small form factor, very light, low power, we think will open up a lot of markets. Yeah. Now you're going after conferencing first, right? Uh, yeah. So you're, you're uh, aiming this camera at a, a desktop uh, system or a room like this where you're gonna have people doing video conferencing with exactly. other people elsewhere in the world. You know, and it turns out that was kind of a, a hard problem because you have to send audio and video in real time and you gotta bring a lot of people together and it just should feel very natural, right? So the nice thing with this device, there's no moving parts. You put it up, you start it, people forget it's there. They just conduct business as they would. 
And you know, there are tens of millions, some people say hundreds of millions of places where people collaborate every day. I wanted to just stop you. Rocky, can you put that shot back in? You're actually looking at the video through this camera and you can see how wide it is. Yeah. Uh, it's a very different form factor than the uh, usual 1080p camera that we're using on, uh, elsewhere in the lab. So we're actually looking at the video here and you can see it, it has no seams and it's a, a very good uh, picture quality. Anyways, continue. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. How much is this camera, by the so way? So it's uh, you know we're doing very aggressive pricing wise. So it's nine hundred ninety five dollars, less than one k. Okay. So let, let me talk about. Uh, so this camera, I have six GoPros. The GoPros are five hundred dollars a piece. Right. So just the GoPros is three thousand dollars here. So you're a third of the price of this thing. And we don't charge you for the stitching software. We built it into yeah, the device. Yeah, my stitching software is a thousand <laughs> on top of that. Yeah. And I had to have this frame that's seven hundred dollars. So that's I, right. That now you're uh, starting to understand why I'm interested in you yeah. <laughs> because yeah w your first uh, model is going to go after conferencing but I think this could be adopted to a, a wide range of things I, I was just at a baseball stadium yesterday and talking with people about virtual reality and we're going to want one of these cameras on yeah. on the first baseline we're yeah. going to want one maybe underneath the plate on second base if we can uh, uh, get that approved uh, we're going to want several of these maybe on drones that are flying around. Right. They're light enough, so yeah. Yeah. No, that'd be awesome. And I think, you know, you know, your vision is kind of the, the what got us excited, which is it'd be very cool to change the way the world sees electronically, right? I mean, why should we always look through a tunnel? And why shouldn't we have a choice where to zoom around, where to pay attention? So, you know, here you can you can pick and choose. Sh show me where that. You, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I'm zoomed in and uh, I'm panning with just the touch and if I had a live screen I could do it you know I could do it with the screen so yeah. it's very very cool now you see it flashes once in a while or yeah. sometimes the image processing moves over in fact right there you can it's see trying to it. decide which way to go which which lens to pick to show you that's exactly right and, and that's kind of the tricky thing is figuring out how to compute that and where to place that so yeah. you know you will see that and and um, you but know it's still a lot better than my camera is even though I have uh, higher resolution GoPros that are more expensive, uh, my, my camera gives a lot of artifacts and takes a long time. In fact, a, a 10 minute video on my camera takes about an hour and a half to render oh, really? on my Mac, on no, my this iMac. Is, wow, wow, no, this is all happening in, in milliseconds. It's like the latency from photons in to bits out is less than 15 milliseconds. Oh. You know, blink of an eye is a few hundred milliseconds. So it's ultra, ultra fast. And that's really the whole idea is to make it something that's for real-time communication, right? Recording is great, and you can easily use it for recording, but the high bar was, was real-time. Yeah. And, you know, the technology will keep evolving and keep getting better. We, we do believe that there's a, a huge opportunity, as you said, in entertainment, in social gatherings, in education. You can plug this into Skype. You can plug it into Facebook, into Google Hangouts, and it's just a bigger field of view. So you can pick whatever field of view you need. Maybe you don't need the 180, but you need more than 50, more than 80. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's something simple I, to I use. I have some friends at GoPro, and they're, they say they're working on similar products, you know, because they're seeing that the uh, early adopters are, are already right. adopting six GoPros to do this new world. Um, do you think you're going to be competitive with them at some point? You know, cause not really, not so far anyway. Okay. I mean, they've aimed more you're at the, build an action camera. Right, right. They've the done a brilliant of... job, you know, for the action market. And um, you know, we do see this device will go into a whole lot of new markets. Part of the fun of being a startup is you, you got to pick one market and win at that. But then it's just fantastic to see people using it in new ways that we hadn't even thought about, yeah. and just creating a cool new uh, and a very good new experience. Can you run this on a battery, or do you need a, a, a USB? Right. Uh, actually, there's a, there's a, a uh, power cable, A right? small, uh, yes. You, it's about five watts of power. Uh, it'll be a little bit less in uh, production uh, beginning in Q3. So, you know, it'll run on a USB uh, um, plug-in. Yeah. And uh, we're going to actually make it also work with USB 2. So we're going to put compression in it so that you can plug it into any device. Power isn't that high. We can buy little power brakes that'll power it for like eight hours. So you, you plug it into the power brake, you put it on a stand, and so you can use it anywhere. And you can, you know, attach it to a tablet or a PC or a Mac and, and do recording with it. Yeah. Crazy where this world is going. Um, you know, it, it works with standard Skype right now. It so. does. Yeah, we, we're gonna be happy to show that to you. So you could, like, you know, we could be here and call anywhere in the world, and instead of seeing kind of the webcam view, they'd see this. Yeah. And um, if you use it with Skype for Business, which is uh, the new name for Link, 
then you get our service with it. Uh, we have a cloud-based service which can be on-prem, and then with that, you get full interactivity. Right. Uh, yeah, scroll, scroll on around a little bit yeah. more, but you can see uh, we're actually showing you what the camera looks like live um, here. And you see it flashes once in a while, yeah, right? Yeah, because it's trying to decide which lens to, to favor for that scene, you know, because it's, it's drawing that boundary in real time. And it's computing that as it goes. Um, and so, yeah, you will see that flash periodically, but, you know, for the most part, it's... Now, I know there's some people watching this who are like, oh, could I use this on a skier at the Olympics? Yeah, that's a you good know. question. You know, for sure, uh, the stationary fittings uh, would work. It's a 30 frames per second camera, so it's a pretty fast device. So, I guess, you know, you'd have to try it and see what happens. Yeah. Uh -huh. With some other places I'm, uh, that are informing my interest in this, I, I went... Rocky and I are going down to the 20th Century Fox, the people who make movie theaters and yeah. movies, and they have a new movie theater that has three uh, 4K screens. Oh, wow. Know? So this would be a cool fit to that. Yeah. So you've got three 4K cameras in there and uh, 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 three cameras giving you a 4K resolution on the X and half height on the Y. It'll, it'll fit in the screen very nicely. And you know, we went out and bought a, we bought a, a 4K screen for our office. We bought a, an iMac 5K just to have the resolution density to show you. The nice thing with the 4K we also find is it makes video better at any resolution because we're oversampling. So if I'm going to paint a pixel, I may have 8 or 16 pixels. And so I can get better signal to noise ratio. The video just looks better yeah. even at lower resolutions. Yeah. Well, this is exciting t uh, times for this world. Um, uh, when is this shipping? Yeah, we're going to be showing it next week. We're at uh, Microsoft Ignite at the conference in Chicago, and then end of Q2, it, end of June. This video comes out the same day. So okay, today. perfect. <laughs> okay, today. And yeah, end of June. Okay. Uh, we, we've got samples for some early adopters right now that we're working with, but end of June we'll start into yeah. volume production. The, the audio on here, you have two microphones. Tell That's me a little right. bit about that. Yeah, the we built into the device on the top uh, dual microphones and an audio processor chip that actually can also allow you to do beamforming. So you can use some advanced audio techniques. Yeah. You can use it to uh, render. Let me show a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. You can use it to decide where to focus, for example, automatically. And you can just use it to hear good quality audio. Cool. If, if you were going to display this into an Oculus Rift, yeah. Uh, which comes next year, really. Yeah. M most people aren't going to get it until uh, probably Christmas next year. That's my guess. Yeah. Right. Uh, there's Valve. There's Oculus. Already, there's uh, the Samsung Gear VR, which is about two hundred dollars, but uses a mobile phone. Right. But the 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 industry is waiting for Oculus. Let's yeah. Let's just be honest about it. Um. And I'm looking around. Uh, do you think you can actually make the sound uh, really good and mm -hmm. and where where I can hear? Uh, something coming off of the uh, the right channel, yeah. And, and well, get me to turn and look toward that. Right, exactly. I mean, you know, we'd we'd, we'd have to work with those guys and, and try it. Um, but yeah, the technology, the audio processor in here is able to do that. It's able to provide data on the separation and metadata on location. So yeah, we should be able to. And I think you know, of course, we have to try it. As you said, the, these new headsets, you know, there's some cool new display technology coming online, right? But they need a great source. And you can have a recorded source like that, uh, which is very cool, or you can have a real-time source. So imagine, you know, you're seeing the action play by play. Well, there's a guy who's happening. actually working on making this real-time. The problem is you have six GoPros yeah. with six cables <laughs> yeah. and, and six points of uh, failure, because yeah. sometimes these cameras heat up and start going off. That's right. See, heat yeah. isn't good for imagers. You know, as you know, it produces dark turns, so they, their quality starts to go down. And uh, so we've done a lot of engineering in kind of the electronics, the software, the thermal, and we put all our software in there um, to create that panoramic video. Yeah. Then our cloud software allows you to stitch m multiple feeds for multiple cameras. So you can have a gallery view. You can pick which camera to look at, and you can pinch and zoom and look around, as we call it. Because it's just so normal, right? I mean, that's what you'd expect to be able to do. I, I think this is going to be a very exciting. I, I was talking with the guy who runs Coachella, the big uh, music festival. Yeah. He also runs Stagecoach, the country music festival. And they're starting to play with these cam kind of, kinds of cameras. He had a big one that was a cylinder with a mirror. Okay. But this size camera, putting it on the microphone and yeah. putting it up on stage would make a lot of sense. That's you know, and being able to just at home say, I want to go on the microphone, yeah. or I want to go on the left side, or I want to go on the right side. That's right. You know, this is really going to be exciting stuff. No, that we'd love to see those kind of use cases, right? That's the fun in building new technologies. Yeah. Um, and as you said, it's just it's just a and 
you know, instinctively through millions of years, we're wired to want to see everything, right? That's how you actually get comfortable. And then with our eyes we, is how we establish trust. And so kind of giving people that sense of, okay, I get this, I know what's going on, I'm immersed, I have kind of some level of control over the experience. Yeah. Do you think, uh, you know, Apple or Dell or someone is thinking about building this kind of camera technology into a laptop, you know, with yeah. three lenses so that they can see a wider view? You know, I, it probably adds too much cost, doesn't it, to, uh, to build it into a, a laptop that itself is selling for $1,000, but. You know, I'd say, you know, and it's, it's, it's interesting you should ask that um, because we're probably one of the few, maybe the only folks who, who could actually do that. Um, you know, we, we have the technology that's inside here that's uh, the, the core IP. And we can take, now, and imagers, you know, video cameras themselves are becoming really tiny. So you can buy a state-of-the-art imager that'll go into a device like this that's only 3.8 millimeters thick, right? That's pretty skinny. And we could put two of them together and start to build this technology into those kinds of devices. So we do think that's going to happen. And uh, you know, it's maybe a little, maybe 18 months out, maybe a year out, but it's technologically becoming possible. The hard part was to figure out how do you stitch these things and, and, and how do you render them so they look, they look right. Yeah. And People who don't do, haven't had a camera like this don't uh, realize how bad the stitching is. Tell me about some of the math that's going on to stitch the three images together. Right in real time. I mean, you, you, once in a while you'll see something jump around, but it's yes. pretty good. Yes, you know? thank it's you. It's a lot better, yeah, there we go. Yeah. There was just one. You, you'll see it if you, if you, yeah. I mean, the, you know, the, the core. Yeah, here on my face, you'll see it a little bit, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and you'll see something flip around a little bit. But this is much better than my camera. What's going on with right. the, uh, the image processing to flip those images in and out? You know, there's, in, in a, inside the chip here, basically it's bringing in these three video feeds in parallel. And then it's doing uh, computation to figure out uh, sort of the lowest cost function. And effectively what it's trying to do is understand an object and try and put the boundary around that object. Uh, and so, so, so when you move, it, it, it'll compute you one way and then at some point it'll decide, well, it's better to put you on the other side yeah. and, and, then, uh, and then draw that in, right? Yeah. But most people who, who are trying to do this stitch at a very far distance. Yeah. Uh, and we're, we're here within three feet. Now, being able to get this close though means that you know, you, you can cover a lot of ground and then actually see people sort of yeah. up front and personal. And you can see, it, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's yeah. trying to really, you know. I mean, when you put multiple objects, sometimes you'll see them move yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this would work for a skier or a rock and roll band? Or As you said, that those should work. And it would be really very cool to give that upfront and personal view, right? Because most people are trying to do panoramas from really far away. So things get kind of tiny. We're trying to do it upfront and personal, right? Really close. To Who invested in this and how did you find your Yeah, company? you know, I mean, a serial entrepreneur of, of living the Valley dream and um, was very lucky. Some of the early investors include uh, Dado Banatao. Uh, he's a serial entrepreneur himself, Lucio Lanza. And then uh, many of the folks who've built companies, sold companies, taken them public. Biggest one most recently is Intel Capital. They've been phenomenal. Uh, actually, Intel has just been phenomenal to work with. Uh, and a great set of investors. Well, they must love this stuff because it uses three chips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Intel yeah. loves anything that, that, that More uses hardware chips. is good. <laughs> yes, and we push the hardware very hard. So you'll see us announce some more technology coming up in, in, in June again and then beyond that where we're, we're going to try and basically make this experience um, as pervasive as possible and as easily accessible. Very cool. As well, possible. thanks for uh, uh, opening my studio back up. Yeah. It's been a, I took a couple of months off and... Uh, Thank you so much, and thanks, Rocky, for uh, switching this and playing with new toys here in the studio. Very good. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Rocky.